Hey, thanks for tuning in to the Build channel. After about a week's hiatus due to work, I had to keep my employer happy, I am back on the Build project and I'm pretty excited. This week we did some window shopping and what I mean by window shopping is we did some shopping for windows. So we ended up buying our window package and uh, I have the performance numbers for the windows. We tried to go with something with good performance uh, yet economical and I think we found the right uh, mix for our budget and for the performance of the house that we were looking for and I know I said this early on in the in some of my videos that I was going to try to avoid the big box stores uh, doing these per these large purchases and and uh, try to go with um, some family owned and operated businesses but I got to be honest at least in the area that I'm in, I get the best customer service from the box stores. I went into Lowe's, I signed up for the uh, pro program, and uh, I feel that I got a great window for a great price, and those guys treated me like royalty, and uh, they've earned my business, to be quite honest. And um, I'm kind of surprised that I'm saying that, but it is what it is, so... Let me take you through our decision-making process and I'll show you the specs on the windows. To the performance numbers for the windows, I wanted to review the, the blueprints again with you guys. Because um, we used this when we uh, had went to Lowe's to, to price out our windows. And a couple of things. <clears throat> One, we averted a little bit of an issue that had we not caught now would probably have been disappointing down the road. Uh, and that's in the laundry pantry room. I have, uh, we had planned for a double hung 3060, which my understanding is that is a three foot by six foot window. So pretty big window, right? Well, if I'm going to have a countertop in front of that window, that six foot window is not going to work because my countertop would go through a portion of the window. So we had to do a, a little reconfiguring here and my wife made a little bit of a sacrifice here because we wanted to keep the back uh, looking symmetrical with the window on bedroom number three. We really wanted to keep the window. So this area is going to be reconfigured and what most likely will happen is we'll have a drop zone here with a bench and maybe some like uh, cabinetry locker style to hang coats and hats and stuff and put our shoes and then on the other side of the window we'll keep our pantry for food storage and maybe have a little bit of a countertop here or a desk type of setup uh, and then we can keep our our larger window here to keep things looking symmetrical now as far as windows go, there's a lot to think about. Uh, first off, I'll address the DH, which is a double hung window. And I think most people un are under the assumption that a double hung window is what is better than a single hung window. And that's not always necessarily the case. So your double hung windows, both sashes are going to move. So you can bring the top sash down or you can bring the bottom sash up or you can do both if you wanted to. And for some people, that may be a benefit. You may, like if you got small pets, a cat or a small dog or whatever, you may not want to have the bottom sash open where that animal could escape. And instead, you could bring that top sash down, still ventilate, have the window open, but then you don't have to worry about the cat or the dog jumping out the window. Uh, also good for cleaning. You can pull that top sash down, clean your windows, although... I can't ever think of a time when I've ever really cleaned a window. So, um, but hey, for some of you people, that may be the thing. Um, so both both sides will tilt in. Now, that's the good thing about a double hung window. The negative with a double hung window is it's not as energy efficient as a single hung. A single hung, the top sash is stationary, so it does not move, and your bottom sash is more rides more in a um, track type of setup and we're going to uh, have the window so it, it doesn't um, swing so it's a little more energy efficient in that I don't have air leakage around that top sash 
um, and a little less air leakage around the bottom sash. So we elected, and, and since we're doing a ranch style home, since we don't clean windows all that often, and even if we did, the windows are fairly close to the ground, we could get them with a step ladder. We decided to do a single hung. It also saves a little bit of money as well because you have less hardware, uh, so less to, less expense for each window. So for us, single hung made sense. As far as the size goes, a three foot by six foot window, uh, if you think about window installation and probably if you look around your home, if you look at the top of your door, most likely the top of your door is level with the top of your windows. So if you think about a door which is typically 80 inches high and you take a window that's six foot or 72 inches and boy that's kind of scary doing public math um, but that window will actually be below 18 inches above the floor so for safety code requires if your window meets certain sizes size requirements and what have you there's some other stipulations in there but for the most part if that bottom sash is within 18 inches from your floor you have to have tempered glass and that's a safety factor in case someone falls into the window they're not going to uh, break into big shards of sharp glass so by going with a little bit smaller window um, we decided that that would save us a lot of money because tempered glass is very expensive. So we shrunk all of our exterior windows down to a 32 inch wide by a 60 inch tall window. So that does a couple of things. It gets rid of the tempered glass requirement for us and it also still uh, meets egress requirements. So if you look at your bedrooms Code requires that you have to have a minimum of one. You have to have two ways out, basically. So we have a door, and we have to have an egress window, at least one. We wanted all of our windows to match, so by default, um, whatever the egress size was going to be, that's what all the windows were going to be. So all the bedrooms will have multiple egress windows. But uh, code for that is 5.7 square feet. You have to have a clear opening, and that's so people can get out, so a firefighter can get in with a oxygen tank on his back um, so you I'm limited on how small I can go window wise but I'm also limited on how big I can go so what we found was a 32 inch by 60 inch window was kind of the sweet spot to be the most cost effective still be able to have good views outside because I think our back um, the back side of the house with the hill and stuff we have some really pretty views and we want to be able to enjoy that from inside the house so we went with a, a big window but not too big where it adds a bunch of cost so uh, the other change that we had uh, or that we're going to do to save a little bit of money is not do the transom windows on top of the windows and door that's going to save us probably um, I'm going to say a couple thousand dollars uh, after looking at the initial estimate from Lowe's so we're gonna eliminate those uh, and I feel like a five-foot window is still plenty big for us it's still gonna let in a lot of light and it's still gonna give us some great views uh, so that's what we did with the windows the bathroom we felt that this window was really not needed so uh, we're going to omit the window in the in the guest bath um, just to, again to save a little bit of on the budget and you know we're probably saving five six seven hundred dollars because that was a three foot by three foot window so not as expensive as the big ones but still uh, still helps us out with the budget so uh, we're gonna do that and then the master bath uh, these windows instead of two singles we're gonna change it to a uh, or instead of a double window we're gonna change it to a single win picture window a 13 inch by 48 inch window um, so that'll be kind of like a transom look over the uh, vanities. Won't be able to see out the window per se, but at least it'll let a little light in for us. Uh, and I think that'll be a nice addition. Also for energy and for budget um, costs, we're going to eliminate the French doors in the front. And we're just going to go with a fiberglass uh, door on the front, one that I can stain. Uh, but we're going to do a 36-inch door. So if we're moving stuff in, 
that helps with that. Uh, and it'll still have a nice look to it. And it'll be a little more energy efficient than what this would be. So I'm guessing there we probably saved maybe $1,500 to $2,000 on that door as well. So we were able to get the windows back within our budget, which, by the way, I will share with you in a video down the road when we get to that point on uh, window costs. But uh, depending on what you do with your home, you can spend a lot of money on windows. So uh, we fell into that trap, had to make some adjustments. Uh, you know, building the home is all about making some sacrifices. We made some sacrifices with the windows to keep us within our budget. And uh, my wife made some sacrifices with the laundry pantry room set up. So, uh, so that's what we did with the windows there. Now let's take a look at, okay. So here's the performance specs for our windows. Uh, as you can see, we decided to go with Pella. And the reason we decided on Pella was because of my experience with Pella, or I should say our experience with Pella. We've done some remodeling. We've used Pella windows. We've had owned some other homes that had Pella windows in them. And we've always been impressed with both, one, the quality of window for the price you pay, and the customer service has always been great. So. We kind of did a middle of the line window. We did a uh, the Pella 250 series windows. There's some lower grade windows that you can do and there's obviously some higher grade windows you can do. The other thing to think about with windows is what they're made out of, what the sash and frame is made out of. We decided for cost to go with a vinyl insulated window so the frame will have foam insulation in it so that'll help with our heating and cooling. You can go wood with uh, aluminum clad on the outside. They have fiberglass windows that are really cool. We looked at some of those, but again, the budget just really wasn't there for us to go that route. And we felt that vinyl was probably the best bang for the buck for us. So that's why we decided to go that route. So it's gonna be a vinyl single hung window and there you can see our 32 by 60. Still meets egress requirements, but gets us away from the tempered glass. U-Factor. So let's talk about performance numbers. My understanding of U-Factor, again, I'm not a professional, but uh, this um, is what I have taken through my research, is U-Factor is the insulation value of the window. Now for me, 0.27 doesn't really mean much. I, When I think of insulation, I think more of an R-Factor. And if we think about our walls, the minimum code for me is going to be R13 in the walls. We'll probably end up with like an R19 wall assembly. But to get this U-Factor into an R value, what you do is basically uh, divide that by one. So if I, I should have done this ahead of time, but I didn't. Uh, if I take one divided by 0.2, seven, uh, that comes up with an R value of 3.7. So each window is gonna have an R value of 3.7 in a probably an R19 wall. So you can see the big difference between uh, a window and, and my uh, studded wall there. So it's like punching a hole in that. So you are, are you're gonna have some uh, obviously heat, some energy I should say, uh, losses there. So something to keep in, in mind too, if you want to get U factors really low, you can go with the triple pane window. Again, cost for us wasn't there in the budget. So this is about the best window that I could find for something that was in our budget uh, was a 0.27 U factor. I'm happy with that. I've seen a lot of windows around the same price range for about a, a 0.29 or a 0.3 U factor. So I feel like I'm getting good value for my money there. The SHGC, so that's solar heat gain coefficient. So basically what that means is the amount of energy that the window is letting through it from the sun. So, uh, and that's a percentage. So 20% of the sun's energy is going to come through that window and heat the inside of my home. Obviously this makes a big difference on your cooling costs. So solar heat gain coefficient uh, for us is 20% or 0.2. I felt like that was a good value as well. I've seen um, things range anywhere from 0.2 up to almost a 0.3. So depending on uh, what you want to do there, something that can help with the 
uh, solar heat gain coefficient is doing your um, sun guard, which Lowe's calls it the sun defense low E insulating glass. That helps bring that solar heat gain coefficient down, and um, the, the low E helps with that. The, it's going to be argon filled windows too, which helps with the insulating factor. Um, and we are going to do some grills between the glass. You can see there just on the top pane, we're going to do a prairie style grill on the inside in between the paints on the glass. So I think that'll be a nice touch uh, on that as well. So in a nutshell, that's our windows and that's why we made the decisions that we did. It may be um, right for someone else doing the build and may, may not work for you doing if you're going to try to do your build. But this is how we came up with what we wanted we all had to factor in energy efficiency with the budget uh, in a nutshell with uh, the looks. Before I leave you guys go, I'd like to talk about one other thing and that is the supply chain issues with construction. If you've been considering doing uh, building a home or remodeling or uh, anything in the construction industry, supply chains are just all wacky right now. So. I'm going to tell you what Lowe's told us. They said that for Pella windows, for these specific windows, we're probably going to be about 8 to 10 weeks out for delivery. So by the time I order, I have a lead time of 8 to 10 weeks. So I just happened to get lucky. I didn't know that ahead of time, but I started to work on the HVAC planning. And one of the things that my building scientists needed to know, building performance scientists needed to know, was the performance numbers for my window. Uh, or for our windows. And uh, so I started to do some research. I thought, hey, we need to start picking out our windows. And we started to notice these long lead times. So if you're going to do a build, it behooves you right now to start thinking about windows early on uh, like us because you don't want to get your framing and stuff up and then have to wait two and a half months on windows uh, and the building just sits there unfinished. So we got lucky on this one. Uh, again, and uh, windows are on order. So hopefully by the time we are nearing the completion on the framing for the garage, uh, we'll have the two windows for it. Uh, the door is in stock. Uh, we're just going to do a um, standard man door on it, nothing special. So no worries there on that. But I'm so glad we uh, decided to do this early on. Uh, and now hopefully we can minimize the construction delays. So that's all I got for this video. Uh, the next video, um, well, we're supposed to have concrete uh, starting next week, hopefully. Uh, it, it was, um, there was storms on the radar today, so I don't know if they were able to finish up the project that was ahead of us, but we're getting close, and I'm hoping next week foundation will be started. Uh, so we're going to have lots of videos on that. Um, we're going to end up doing a compaction test on the dirt, so I'll give you guys the ins and outs about that foundation install, another inspection for the footers uh, and, and concrete stuff and more digging. So uh, that's to come and hopefully um, knock on wood work uh, stays uh, cooperative with this and I'm able to get some more videos out um, shooting for one a week uh, if not more. So thanks for watching. If you haven't done so, please subscribe. Uh, if, if you think these videos help you or you find them useful, um, any kind of comments or, uh, you know, give me a thumbs up on that helps the channel out. And uh, if you got questions, let me know. I try to do my best to answer things uh, or at least respond uh, to the comments. Uh, so uh, it's very much appreciated. And thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you guys next time.